I like that because I think then no one feels guilty about like, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't you know you were. How much yeah. did you spend? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like 20. Mm-hmm. What did you spend? 500. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the budget. Yeah, so. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amouge bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 46 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. As a local credit union, we love local restaurants too. And this week on The Perfect Bite, we're sharing a spot that we've been going to for at least 15 years, Metro Pizza. Next, we're going to talk about Valentine's Day on a budget. And finally, we'll share tips on how you can reframe negative thoughts. So like Crystal said, each week on The Perfect Bite, we visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope you'll give a try. And this one is one of our favorites. Both Crystal and I have been going here for a long time. I know for myself, maybe 15 years or more. What about you, Metro Pizza? I feel like even longer because I remember growing up um, living on the east side of town. My dad used to go to like, it must have been like one of their first locations. Mm -hmm. And so that's at least yeah, like over Flamingo 20. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you're right. I've probably been there before too, even before 15 years, but they have locations all over the valley. Um, the one I went to is on in the northwest part of town off of Sky Point Drive, and they've been around since 1928. So yeah, we've probably been going yes. <laughs> for a while since we've lived here in Las Vegas. So they have three generations of uh, people that have now worked and run the restaurant. They make all their own dough and sauces, and it's just a really great classic sit-down pizza restaurant, although of course they do take out as well when my brother came to town recently we even took them to metro pizza so it's like a place that you're like we can all gather here yeah. we can fit a lot of people they have a really big dining area and so it's kind of fancy in there yeah. it's like a fancy pizza joint and there's like a I mural like on the wall of like mm-hmm. las vegas and you know there's just some cool stuff so yeah i think that one thing i like there too is there's something for everybody and actually i'm going to share a few of the things that we always order and only one of them is actually pizza. So <laughs> there's lots of good choices there. So the first one is nuclear fries. Have Love you them. tried those? Yes, okay. yes. So they're just a little spicy. They have a really nice um, like dry seasoning on top of it and they're unique to Metro Pizza. They're so good. Hot and spicy. Um, the next one is a Tuscan salad, which I don't know, growing up when we had pizza, my mom mm-hmm. always had to have a salad. It was like balancing out the healthy or something so it's like well where's your salad with your pizza so I always (laughs) order a salad it's got just assorted greens these amazing like marinated tomatoes and then they also have slices of pear oh toasted walnuts and then blue cheese crumbles gross get that on the side no (laughs) you can have blue cheese and then this amazing balsamic vinaigrette I think they have a couple different options get the balsamic and so I actually love the salad so much. I remember early on in my marriage, I had a young baby. I was so tired, but I wanted to do something really nice for Valentine's Day, just like a stay at home kind of, you know, romantic dinner or whatever. And I just Uh had no energy, but I wanted this salad so bad. And so I ordered it from Metro Pizza. I got the Tuscan salad, garlic knots, and I think it's maybe like spaghetti or another one of their pastas. And Crystal, I literally put it in like my own bowl and like my own my own pan, and I was like, "Look, I like made, I made this." Yeah. <laughs> no, that sounds so cute, yeah. and it's yeah, they've got the perfect. It's like they've got some romantic food there, mm-hmm. the spaghetti and the garlic knots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great place. I think I eventually came clean and told them that I didn't make it. But yeah, it was like that's all I wanted to eat. Like, this is um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> How did you make this? I'm not good, everybody. <laughs> so, oh, speaking of garlic knots, that's another thing that I love getting. They come six to an order, and they're just delicious, like freshly baked. They have melted butter and cheese on top, and they come with their homemade marinara sauce. It's delicious. And then the other thing I like to get is a meatball slider, which is basically a meatball with marinara on a garlic knot. Oh, I've yes. never tried that. Delicious. So you get four to a serving. I've been actually ordering that recently because – me and cheese are not simpatico lately. So, but I wanted to mention Metro Pizza has a dairy free cheese. Yes, I do know that. Mm-hmm. One of my sons is allergic. And so, when we are getting pizza, that we love using Metro because they have that option. Yes. So, he can get the vegan cheese and still kind of get Feel that. Feel like you're part of the, the yes. family eating, yes. you know, not you're like over in the corner eating something else. But yeah, right. so I'll get the, the garlic knots with the meatballs with no cheese or, yeah, that 
vegan cheese as well. And so then the last one, an actual pizza from Metro Pizza. Our favorite is the Gotham. And just to give you like some pricing, a small is $14.25, a large is $27.95. And this is kind of like a a pizza supreme, if you want to think about it. So pepperoni, mushrooms, sausage, peppers, onions, kind of has like the works on it. So for a family of six, we probably spend about, you know, $60 for a pizza, salad, and fries. But if we go in and actually eat, like the service is so friendly. We always have the same server. She just goes above and beyond. Like last time she was like, does anybody want a, a to-go cup and a refill? Mm-hmm. Like just just always giving us extra um, things. And so it's so fun. We took our um, family there and they loved it too. So Highly recommend Metro Pizza all over the valley. If you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, please send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We would love to hear from you. So just like my Valentine's Day dinner from long ago, sometimes you want to plan something that is memorable but doesn't break the bank. So Crystal, how can we plan Valentine's Day but stay in our budget? I have some really good tips on this. Um, The month of love is just a few weeks away, so there's no better time to start planning than right now for a romantic Valentine's Day that doesn't leave your bank account drained. Um, The best way to do this is to create a budget in advance. We always say budget, budget, budget. But Valentine's Day, we're going to get a little bit creative with it. So here are a few achievable ideas for a romantic Valentine's Day within your budget. Um, The first one is to go on a picnic. It's simple, but it's memorable. You know, find a good park with um, a good green grassy patch that you can um, sit down with. And um, if the weather is fine, hopefully you can find a good scenic location. Bring a couple items like crackers, fruits, sandwiches, desserts. If you want, even bring a glass of wine or something like that with you. Um, But it's nice and easy, memorable. Um, not your traditional date, so it will definitely stand yeah, out for and Valentine's we're lucky Day. Here in Las Vegas, like we do get these pockets of good weather even yeah. in February, so you never know. Me too, exactly. The next thing to do is to plan a movie night at home. So if you and your partner um, don't want to go outside and you want to just kind of <laughs> stay inside, stay cozy at home, watch a movie, um, like a happy movie, fairy tale ending. There's so many streaming different devices. A lot of them I know, like um, Hulu, a lot of times they'll have like themed sections. So like for Halloween, it's like a uh, Halloween mm-hmm. and you click on that mm-hmm. and there's like all these recommended movies. Well, same thing for Valentine's Day. Yeah, romance you know, section. Yeah, check mm-hmm. those out. Make some popcorn, get some snacks, cuddle under a blanket. If you want to go outdoors with the movie, maybe if you have like a projector, maybe you can go into your backyard. Again, if the weather is right and um, do it outside. Yeah, so be fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. And I think like one of the fun things I think with these, um, the first two, go on a picnic or even planning a movie night, are things that you can do with the family. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got kids. And so I like to try to get them involved in Valentine's Day. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys do anything as family? I was going to say we... One, speaking of pizza, I don't know that Metro Pizza, pizza does this, but someone does a heart-shaped I've pizza. I've seen those. Right? I don't know who does it, though. I yeah. can't remember either, but just go a little over the top, you know, like do heart-themed mm-hmm. stuff and get out the sparkling cider for the kids and yeah. you know, just make it kind of a fun. Because I think when you have small kids, you have to be even more creative because you can't always get a babysitter on Valentine's Day. No. That's Everyone's trying to find one. you got to compete for that. So, yeah, if you end up staying at home, I think finding ways – to include the kids would be really fun. Yes. And the next one is to plan an outdoor adventure. So if you're an outdoor lovers, if it's a nice day, you can go to the mountains out here. We've got, you know, Red Rock. There's Mount Charleston. There may be still some snow out mm-hmm. there, you know, bundle up um, or go like backpacking, go on a walking uh, nature trail, something out of the, the ordinary. Um But one thing we recommend is to switch off your phones and devote your attention to your partner so you can enjoy the outdoor adventure. tip. And the next one is to exchange affordable gifts. So I know you'll you probably see a lot of ads for diamond rings, gold bracelets, things like yeah, that. That's my new car. For <laughs> right. Like the Christmas gift. Yes. <laughs> no. So that may not be the best option if you're looking at something a little bit more affordable. Maybe look into affordable alternatives like a bunch of flowers. Go to a local store, boxes of chocolates, things like that. Maybe a handmade card can be something that you, mm-hmm. you do. Um, one thing, though, we do want to uh, remind you, if you are shopping online, just make sure you're um, – being careful with your credit card. There's a lot of fraudsters out there. During any major holiday, there are offers that may seem too too good to be true. So keep an eye out for that. One idea 
is to set a budget per gift that um, each of you are going to spend on the other and make sure that you stay within that person's budget. So you could say $20, mm -hmm. be creative. You know, that's all you've got to spend on me. Don't go above it, 20 bucks. So that can be a, another fun idea for being affordable. I like that because I think then no one feels guilty about like, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't you know this, you were. How yeah. much did you spend? Uh -huh. Yeah. Like 20. Mm -hmm. What did you spend? 500. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the budget. Yeah. So mm -hmm. make a plan in advance mm -hmm. and you guys can um, achieve something very fun and memorable. All right, listeners, saving for Valentine's Day can be accomplished with some advanced planning and budgeting. Um, if you need any additional help, CCU provides a free resource to help you build your budget that works for you. Now we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $70 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.4 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, mortgages, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured. Next up is our Future Self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. If you're recovering or have recovered from a financial loss or trauma, at times you'll find yourself bouncing back in negativity, which is okay sometimes, but when that negative thinking becomes a habit, it can really hinder your ability to function and it delays your goals. So in this segment of the podcast, we're going to break down some really effective strategies to reframe negative thoughts into positive thinking. This is from St. Bonaventure University. We'll share a link to that article in our show notes. So Crystal, what like reframing, I was just thinking about it in general. I feel like it's such a powerful tool that I just don't use enough Yeah, to think about how to make something negative become positive or like finding a new angle. Do yeah. you do this? I, or? I find myself doing this and I just have to tell myself, take a step back. Don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just breathe. That's like my go-to. Just, just breathe. breathe. <laughs> yes. I feel a mantra. I think I'll do this for my kids or for a friend. Yeah. Much more likely than for myself. So I want to think about like, what advice would you give to a friend and then give it to your, back to yourself? Because mm -hmm. I'll just be hard on myself. But someone else, I'd be like, oh, don't be, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, like, you're no, great, I, I get you that. Know? So, the same here too. Yeah. So the steps from St. Bonaventure in step one, identify the root of negative thinking. If you learn how to recognize these thoughts, it can help reframing the process so much easier. So they say that there's different types of negative thinking. The first is filtering. So we only look at the negative parts. We disregard the positive. Personalizing. We see yourself as the sole cause of negative events. I mm. think that's what I was just talking about. So <laughs> catastrophizing. You automatically anticipate the worst outcome. And polarizing. Things are only good or bad. There's no middle ground. So I could definitely relate to some of those. Uh, step two, determine the negative thoughts to reframe. So first you just need to see like, what is it there that is being so negative that you want to change? Is it a past relationship or something that you're really focused on in your life right now? Focusing on one negative thought at a time makes the reframing process less overwhelming. And then step three, now that we've identified and we know what type of negative thought it is and what the thoughts are, we need to reframe them. So St. Bonaventure University has two techniques for reframing negative into positive thinking. So the first is positive reframing. This means finding the good side of the difficult situation. For example, you missed a deadline at work. Instead of dwelling on a negative thought, find the upside. And it could be, okay, now I have an opportunity to discuss my workload with my manager because there's a reason I missed this deadline and now I want to talk to someone about mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. looking for that, I guess, silver lining, yeah, make it more positive. And then the second, examine the evidence. This technique requires you to really analyze the possible scenarios that you think negatively about and ask yourself questions. And the question I really liked was sort of, what is the worst possible outcome of this negative scenario? Because sometimes when I do that, I'm like, it's not that bad. Yeah. Like, what's, what's the really worst gonna thing that could happen? Yeah. Who's really upset? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's not that bad. And then, um, you know, how likely is it to actually happen? Like, it's not really likely. And then the last one I would say is, how often has this actually occurred in the past? Like, this negative scenario that you're dwelling on and, like, in yeah. repeat in your mind. Being late. Are you late all the time? Yeah, or was it, it just one time? Exactly. Yeah. It hasn't really happened. So answering these questions will help you face these difficult situations and find a way to reframe, have a more balanced approach to your thinking. So can you think of any examples of reframing, Crystal, that you can think about? Um, I think so. And I think it's like a very big reframe. But um, 
you know, going, not going to school, not finishing school right away. Um, for like a while I was like, man, why didn't I, why didn't I finish school? I should have just kept going, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, after a while I just had to get to a point where I was like, well, you know, things happened in between me stopping, um, that I probably wouldn't have achieved if I just kept going through. So it actually wasn't bad. Yeah. In the moment and kind of, you know, at a different angle, it was not the best decision, but at the same time, it was the best decision because I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't have done those like not correct right, moves, like you I guess. Look back and say this actually probably happened in the right order. Yeah. In the long run. Yeah. In the yeah. long run. In the moment, I was mm-hmm. like, Ugh, that's yeah. probably not the best. But <laughs> in the long run, yes, yeah. that was OK. Everything worked out. That's good. So one example I feel like of reframing is flipping the script. So you basically reverse the words that are said and make it apply to someone else or a different situation. If they don't make sense in that case, then it probably shouldn't apply to you too. One that comes to my mind is being a working mom. Okay. People will say things to me like, how does your husband feel about you working full time? Mm. And that feels like a negative vibe to me. And uh-huh. so when I flip it around and I say, to a husband, how does how does your wife feel about you working full time out of the house? <laughs> Is she okay with you being an, a breadwinner? Mm-hmm. That sounds ridiculous, right? Right. So then I can say to myself, "That's ridiculous that that person yeah. said that to me." Don't even take. I'm not don't gonna be bothered by it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just re- I'll just kind of flip it around, and then it makes me feel like mm, off my shoulders. I don't care about it anymore yeah. because it, it doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. So anyway, and then I think the words that you choose can really help you be more positive. So instead of saying, like, what went wrong? Mm-hmm. You say, what can I learn? Yeah. What is the outcome that I can take away from this? And just that kind of reframing these negative thoughts, it really takes practice to think about that first. But I really feel like the next time you find yourself, like, going into those negative thinking, just try to follow some of these strategies, and I think it will really help you be more positive. Yeah, I agree. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.